another megachurch pastor. One of my favorite pastors, Dr. Tony Evans, is stepping away from senior pastoral duties due to sin. Dr. Tony Evans, the pastor of a megachurch in Dallas, has stepped down from his role because of a secret sin. And this time, Dr. Tony Evans? Well-known Dallas pastor Dr. Tony Evans cited a past sin as the reason for the move after more than 40 years at the pulpit. How exactly did he fall? Come on, thirsty! Come all who are hungry, and I will quench your thirst and give you eternal life. Friends, if you haven't ever heard of Dr. Tony Evans of Oak Cliff Bible Fellowship in Dallas, Texas, He's gained a pretty big following over the years. At one point, he was the chaplain for the Dallas Cowboys. He also spoke at the Promise Keepers men's rallies back in the day. And now, believe it or not, he has actually stepped down from pastoring his church after nearly 50 years. And he's done it because of some unnamed sin. He said so in a statement he released this week. Holy cow, what do we make of this? Before we get into all that, I'd like to encourage you to give this video a thumbs up if you like it. In fact, if you go ahead and do that right now for me, I'd greatly appreciate it. And make sure you subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. I am Pastor AJ Platt, the lead pastor of Gospel Ministries, and we exist to help everyone experience, demonstrate, and share God's great gospel. You can stay connected with me at PastorAJ.com where you can sign up for my weekly email newsletter. I will challenge you to grow in your faith through learning about what the Bible teaches on cultural and other issues. Also, make sure you reach out to me at Pastor AJ Platt on other social media platforms. If you're interested in the topic of eschatology, buy my new book, End Times Mission. It's an introduction to post-millennial eschatology, but you'll also walk away from this read with a good understanding of the topic as a whole. All right, so now let's talk about Dr. Evans. What exactly happened here? This was a bit of a shock to those in the Christian community this week. We've seen this discussed already by several popular Christian podcasters. And gosh, I have to admit, this one breaks my heart a little bit. I remember listening to Pastor Dr. Evans' sermon after the loss of his wife of 50 years or so. I actually had the opportunity to meet him about 10 years ago when he came and spoke at a local church here in Northeastern Ohio. Very gifted in the area of leadership, public speaking. He's inspired a lot and a lot of people. And if you've never heard him, here's just a little video montage that his ministry put out a couple of years ago with clips from his sermons. Faith is confidence in something you do not see yet. The question you have to ask with faith is, does God have integrity? And if he does, will I align what he tells me to do in every area of life, my career, my money, my, my relationships, my singlehood, my this, my that, my that. And does God have integrity on every subject? Accepting Christ takes you to heaven. Living by faith brings heaven to you. So the problem today is that there are too many unbelieving believers. He can't be number two. You put him in the back of anything in your life and you just lost him. God has operated this way from the beginning of bringing stuff you can see out of stuff you can't see. I don't know if you're recognizing his voice at this point, but, you know, just profound speaker and lots of great stuff that he's shared and communicated to people over the years about biblical topics, the kingdom of God and Christian growth. And he created a whole universe with this strategy. Now, what did you tell me your problem was? Even though you walked through this door of spiritual failure, if you right now will begin to live by faith, God still will let you make a list. Man, I'm getting a little fired up just listening to these sermons here. Come on, thirsty. Come all who are hungry, and I will quench your thirst and give you eternal life. Only through receiving Jesus Christ as your personal Savior will your passport be stamped and entrance be granted. Wow. Amen. Do you feel inspired? You know, obviously a lot of people in the Dallas Fort Worth area did because he grew his church from like 25 members 50 years ago to 10,000. In fact, a few years ago, he was actually working with former President George W. Bush on some kind of initiative in the Dallas area. So definitely made his rounds as a preacher, certainly had an impact for the kingdom. So what exactly took place here? Let's take a look at the local news piece on the story. Well-known Dallas pastor Dr. Tony Evans stepped aside from leading the 10,000-member Oak Cliff Bible Fellowship. Evans cited a past sin as the reason for the move after more than 40 years at the pulpit. This is what's getting everybody's attention, the word sin. As you'll see in a second, though, he doesn't name what that specific sin is, so it's leaving a lot of people talking. For Stephen Dial, live with what Evans told the congregation. Stephen. Yeah, the news was a big shock to the faith-based community nationwide. And I would Evans, imagine. who recently got married, said that he committed no sin, I mean, no 
crime but committed a sin. Sunday, renowned Dallas pastor Dr. Tony Evans told his congregation he would be stepping away from his senior pastoral duties. Evans spoke to the congregation, but it was not part of the recording posted to the church website, which featured lead associate pastor Bobby Gibson. Good morning, Oak Cliff. Come on, clap, 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 clap. Evans grew the congregation of Oak Cliff Bible Fellowship to 10,000 members, serving as pastor for more than 40 years. Evans said the foundation of his ministry is the commitment to the Word of God as the supreme standard. You know, that is a long time to be pastoring a church. I don't know if that hit anyone else upside the head, but I, th I think he's in his 48th year as the pastor of that church. That is a long time to be doing ministry without scandal, at least seemingly. I mean, what an incredible track record. And it almost makes you wonder, like, what could he possibly have done to necessitate his stepping down after that many years of service. I mean, this would have to be a pretty big deal. A lot of people are speculating just because of the wording and the nature of it. It seems like it would have to be some kind of a sexual sin. Did he have an affair of some kind? Now, he did recently remarry, like just about six months ago, after the death of his wife. So let's see what he had to say about it. In a statement, he went on to say, a number of years ago, I fell short of that standard. I am therefore required to apply the same biblical standard of repentance and restoration to myself that I have applied to others. This is what people are picking apart, where he said a number of years ago. Like, what on earth does that mean? Maybe this was something that he brought to the attention of the elders. A number of years ago seems to maybe be something that took place long before the death of his first wife. My initial thoughts were, did he have a premarital relationship with his current wife? Maybe that's what this was referring to, but this is throwing me off a little bit here. A number of years ago. And why is this all coming out now? There's been much as to what specifically caused Evans to step aside and for how long. He did not address that directly, but said, while I have committed no crime, I did not use righteous judgment in my actions. In light of this, I am stepping away from my pastoral duties and am submitting to a healing and restoration process established by the elders. Okay, so this is the other part that has everybody talking. While I have committed no crime, in other words, like this sin apparently didn't break any civil laws, but was a moral failing of some kind. If you look at different situations like this over the years, there have been a number of notable ones. I can think of Mark Driscoll's leaving Mars Hill, the church that he started, for being associated with establishing a culture of bullying within the leadership structure of his congregation. And I think if I remember correctly, a misappropriation of funds regarding his book sales and the church's purchasing of a large number of those books. How much of that was true, I have no idea, but I said all of that just to say that there are a number of issues that could necessitate a pastor stepping down. So we don't know exactly what this sin is. However, the vagueness of it and the nature of other scandals seem to point to a sexual scandal of some kind, but we'll see if they have a clarifying statement of some kind in the future. Now, the statement also went on to say that the leadership will advise the congregation on the next steps forward. Again, we don't know if Evans is just stepping down temporarily or if this will be permanent. So this was one of the other elements of his statement that we don't know how long Tony Evans is stepping down for. Maybe we'll see him back in ministry at some point. But a lot of this is going to depend on the nature of his sin. Because unfortunately, as we've seen in so many other cases, this could permanently affect his ministry and the way people receive him in the Christian community. So it got me thinking a lot about ministry and leadership and character. And of course, we all make mistakes. But what do we do when we make those mistakes? And I guess from our perspective, those looking from the outside in at a person's personal life and a person who's been a leadership figure in the Christian community for half a century. Well, as I was reflecting on some of this, scripture came to mind from Paul's letter to the Galatian church about how we should receive a brother or sister when they fall in their walk with God. The scriptures, Galatians 6, 1 and following, brothers and sisters, if someone is caught in a sin, you may have heard this verse before, you who live by the Spirit should restore that person gently, but watch yourselves or you also may be tempted. Carry each other's burdens and in this way, you will fulfill the law of Christ. If anyone thinks they are something when they are not, they deceive themselves. Each one should test their own actions. 
Then they can take pride in themselves alone without comparing themselves to someone else, for each one should carry their own load. Nevertheless, the one who receives instruction of the word should share all good things with their instructor. So in Paul's letter to the Galatians, Paul is dealing with a group of people who are taking the Jewish law too radically, not realizing that in Christ there is a new covenant. Now, before you get too excited, all of those moral laws from the Old Covenant and the Torah are still in effect. But Christ has just fulfilled and changed some of those ceremonial ones, like circumcision or the animal sacrifices. So this explains Paul's juxtaposing the Spirit with the law. You see it in several of his letters, but take note of it here in this passage. Those who live by the Spirit, in other words, those who have faith in Christ— and through that faith have been filled with the Holy Spirit. What was the nature of the fall Paul was talking about in this passage here? Well, he talks just prior to this about the deeds of the flesh and all the things that people can get carried away by. But a huge theme of his passage is people, particularly Jews in that time, backsliding to the old covenant and not trusting in their relationship with Christ. That's why in verse 2 here, he talks about fulfilling the law of Christ. You see, Paul is very concerned with pulling people out of their old covenant Judaism and into the new covenant of Christ. And so it's within that context that we can see people can fall from their relationship with Christ by getting immersed in sexual and other sin. So it's not just the big sins that Paul has in mind here, but also some of the subtle sins that church people, for lack of better terminology, can sometimes be guilty of. The point is that when we sin, we are walking away from our relationship with Christ. So what are some of our takeaways from this scripture as it applies to this situation with Dr. Evans and maybe how we can learn from it ourselves if we're in leadership or just Christians trying to get by in this life? Well, first of all, I think it's important that we as Christians realize the importance of repentance in the Christian lifestyle. People in the Christian community and even leaders will sin. Repentance is necessary to be restored to a right relationship with Jesus. But at the same time, those sins often impact us, as may end up being the case here with Dr. Evans. What's going to happen when we find out, God forbid, or if we find out, that he had some kind of extramarital affair that was swept under the rug 10 years ago or 30 years ago? How do we respond? Well, Galatians tells us. We ought to do so in a way in which we are utilizing humility and not sweeping the sins under the rug, lest we fall victim to the same stuff. I think this part of Galatians 6 is a great application for this culture, where we see sexual and other sins of all kinds minimized based on a misguided and idolatrous understanding of God's love. This is one of the big problems with the LGBT community today. They will smash their misguided understanding of the Christian life in our face and scream at us, telling us that we need to love them. Yet true love looks like accountability. I think that's what Paul means when he says to watch yourselves, or you may also be tempted. In other words, we don't want to minimize sin. Sin is a big deal. It's a big deal, especially as a leader. And so we ought to seek to restore people. We ought to seek to extend grace. But we can't do it in a way that minimizes the sin. Sin is a big deal, and all sin is an affront to God and his nature. So as more details come out and we see what really happened and you know maybe we're incredibly disappointed by yet another Christian leader who has fallen, let's follow Paul's instruction to reach out with grace and see a brother in Christ restored, but not do it in a way that minimizes. And let's make sure to carry our own burdens. In other words, to look inside ourselves and make sure that we are legitimately following Christ and giving honor to his holiness in our lives. And so in that regard, are you, by God's grace, fortunate that you haven't had some secret sin come into the public purview? I would say to deal with it. Confess it to a brother or sister in Christ and do it now before you see yourself in a situation like this one. With that, friends, let's be praying for Dr. Tony Evans and the Christian church as a whole, because I don't think we ever want to be happy to see somebody fall or make other people's lives the topic of our conversation. Certainly, we should be first and foremost concerned with our own walk with God carry your own burden. And in that way, God will make you the kind of strong Christian that will walk with him in integrity for a long, long time. With that, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And friends, I will see you in the next video. God bless.